Matt, you had a nice run there, second yeah, half. Um, yeah. Carson had a field view. Um, mm -hmm. Just talk about you know that that yeah. particular run, how you create. Uh, yeah. Well, I thought we uh, you know were able to get a couple loose balls and rebounds, and uh, got us out in transition a couple times. Um, Dakota was able to hit a three. And, uh, you know, Carson got to the rim a couple times. And uh, we got in transition. And that's what you have to do. You know, you got to be able to steal some possessions and, and get in transition or get some offensive rebounds. And we needed something to spark us. And I think that it happens to a lot of teams. What happened to us in the first half is, you know, you get away from what helps you get a lead. You know, and that's just what we did. And we were able to put some consecutive stops together there in the second half and be able to score the ball and then be able to build our lead up. They had some of those kind of long, weird rebounds off of long threes in the first half. But right. how did you see the game start to change in your favor yeah. as the rebounding? Well, I, I thought we were, you know, we're a little bit better defensively, and um, you know, I, I thought we were able to use our defense and turn it into offense a little bit. And then I thought we did a better job of just executing on the offensive end. It didn't really go our way offensively, even though we ended up scoring a lot of points. Um, you know, we had some opportunities that, you know, we didn't make the most of. And, and you're going to have games like that. You know, you've got to be able to keep your frustration level at, you know, at a minimum and then, you know, still be able to make plays and still be able to stop people on the defensive end. So, um, you know, we, we just got to work on, you know, being more consistent, getting better box out and be able to get to those loose balls. I think at times we're, we're watching and, you know, we're in rotations because we're making mistakes. A lot of times when you make those mistakes and you get behind plays, you know, good teams and good players aren't going to let you catch up. Did uh, Dakota show some of his, uh, you know, efficiency today? He started 5-5 yeah. five and, five and I think he was 5-7. Well, seven that, that's how he is. You know, you look at his, you know, his numbers and, and being 6 for 7 um, with 16 points, you know, 3 assists, 1 turnover. That's, that, you know, that's who he is. You know, he's, he's a very, very efficient player. Um, you know, obviously in a, in a real game, I don't know if he's, you know, we take him out too much. You know, he plays a lot more than he probably does today, even though he had 25 minutes. Um, we're definitely a better team with him out there. Did you see another kind of something with him confidence-wise click in the summer or just his comfort level on offense? Because that's no, grown over yeah. the course of his career. Well, I think, you know, you're going to have more opportunities. You know, when you have the guys that we've had on our team, you know, you play off of them a lot. And so, you know, now it's something where, you're, you know, he's just going to have more opportunities. But it's... Not something where we, you know, we haven't encouraged him to shoot before. You know, he's such a good decision maker. He's wired to make the right play. So at times, you know, he's got his pull up. You know, he's got his threes. But if guys are open or guys are in rotations or one of our bigs, you know, have good position, you know, he gets him the ball. You know, he's, he's just not a. A lot of times, guys get labeled. You know, he's he's a good basketball player. He's just not a good shooter. With the offensive rebounds, is there anything to that about you know, the way Swanigan might have conditioned them last year? Because he got so many of them. No, they're, they're just not very good at boxing out and go and get the ball. We've had that issue in practice. We've had it a little bit on our trip. Um, we had it in our inner squad scrimmage. And so we have to do a better job as a team. At times, you make mistakes or you're behind plays. You just have to simply go get the basketball. So they can't use that as an excuse. We, we just got to do a better job of boxing out and chasing the ball. Where is Harms right now in relation to his ability to help you win? Why well, I think he's he's going to help us win. I think, um, you know, he's, he's definitely a guy that understands basketball. Um, he has a skill level. He can block a shot. He knows what's going on. Um, very long. Even though he's not a low post type guy, he's still seven foot three. So if he can get some dump downs or some dribble penetrations or he can get deep position, you know, he, he's got enough skill to where, you know, in practice it's hard because it's, a, it's kind of a melee, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a wrestling match sometimes between him and Isaac. In the game they call fouls. And um, you know, I, I think he's you know, progressed nicely. He's done some really good things for us. You know, I wish he had the summer to play in those games. I think he would even be further along. But he's uh, he's done some really good things for us in practice. You don't try to get too excited about somebody because you know you still have to go out and play. But you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about what he can do. You know, not just this year, but you know, in his career. I mean, the sky's the limit for him. In my opinion. You told us in New York that, that Tommy was, or no, sorry, Tom, not Tommy, uh, Grady was um, the best rebounder in practice yeah. when, when it wasn't even close. Now, that's great news for him, but that would seem to be potentially a problem for the rest of the roster. No are there guys that are older, more experienced guys that aren't right. just well, getting it Grady done? Grady has right such now? a motor. You know, Grady just you know, goes hard and you know, just crashes in there and trying to find the ball. The thing about in practice, it's you know, your minutes aren't 
you know, they're not diminished, you know, they're not in practice. Everybody's in practice. And right. so he gets full minutes in a practice. So that, that comes out more than you see there because he's not going to get, you know, 30, 35 minutes in a game. You know, he's going to be a guy that gets five to 15 minutes, you know, backing up Vince Edwards. And so that's hard to do. It's hard to go in there and be able to do that. You would see someone who, who would get a lot of rebounds if he played more. But obviously, you know, he's, he's behind a couple of really good guys, especially Vince. How about one more with uh, Dakota? It seemed like a couple of times he pulled off some of those young guys and kind of educating them on the court. What does he bring mm -hmm. you there, just from a yeah. leadership or from like a, almost a coach on yeah, the court? Yeah, you know, if you keep things to yourself, your experience doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You have to share. Yeah. You know, you have to be able to talk about it, but you also have to be able to do it in a constructive manner uh, and help the guys. The one thing that's really important for our guys is to try to be proactive. You know, just don't be talking to talk and be proactive about what's coming up, you know, what to look for. You know, if this happens, tell them what to do. If this doesn't happen, tell them what to do. A lot of times after something happens, you know, that's what fans do. Fans wait and say, oh, you guys don't rebound very well. You know, instead of saying, okay, well, how can we rebound better? Well, that's what coaches, you know, leadership and experienced players do. You know, they help the other guys. You kind of alluded to the fact that you didn't love what you did offensively, at least maybe the first half. Um, right. Can you can you talk a little more about that? Well, I thought the the change in the half was the three possessions in a row that we shot the ball quick. You know, we, we shot a contested pull up twenty five footer, we shot a step back three, and then Dakota had really played well and really got into rhythm right in that mix, and then he shot a twenty five footer off the break, and it wasn't that bad of a shot, but it was a bad shot after those two possessions, and I thought that kind of set the tone. And we have those stretches when we get leads. You know, we have those stretches where we get away from what got us a lead. I think it's a very natural byproduct um, of having a lead of 10 or more in the first half. I think everybody sees it. You get away from, you know, just doing the things that you did to get the lead. And, um, you know, that was something that I thought kind of set the tone for the game to be as close as it was, you know, at halftime. I thought we did that. Um, obviously, Indiana State did some good things. They made shots. They played hard. Um, but also, we, we had to show some patience there um, in how we played. Are they where you want them to be defensively at this point? No. But I don't, think ever, I don't think I've ever said yes to that. <laughs> well, I think competition allows you to know that, like the challenges of another team. Because, you know, you don't go and play Indiana State and then play Carroll College and they're the same system, the same style. Then you go play West Virginia, that's a completely different style. Then you have SIU Edwardsville, you have Chicago State, and obviously our next game is Marquette. So you get a lot of different styles, different venues. You know, you'll have some neutral sites, you'll have some home games, um, you'll have a road game. And so I, I think when you see those type of things, when a scouting report can come back into it, how well do we follow a detailed scouting report? You know, how much pride do we show? I think that's something we have to do a better job. We have to show more pride than just you know beating the guy in front of us, defending him, boxing him out, doing a lot of the dirty work. Um, to be successful when balls are loose and on the defensive end. But no, we're, we're a long way away. Um, I think we can beat people from an offensive standpoint. Um, but I don't think we can be a championship team beating people just from an offensive standpoint. You know, I, I think we have a good season. Um, but for us to have a championship caliber team and, and have a special season, we're going to have to be better rebounding and defending. But that's always, you know, you're always devil's advocate with your own team. You know, I don't, there's not a coach in America that doesn't have some flaw right now he's overly concerned about I don't care you know who you are if you're ranked in the top 10 or the, in the last 10 in the country you had uh, no Joel Eastern on their leading score Scott mm -hmm. um, for a little bit at the end of the game is that good experience for him just to yeah. face somebody that caliber I think really? it's it's great experience the one thing that a lot of people look at physical talent um, with players and with young players the the element of the variable that they're lacking is their concentration it, it's hard for them to leave offense at offense and move to defense. If something happens on that end, sometimes it keeps them from concentrating and doing their job. And then we switch ball screens a lot with four people. And so I got to constantly be changing. You know, you can shoot, the next guy can drive, the next guy can drive and shoot. You got to know people, you got to know faces, you got to know numbers, and you got to know what they can do. And so that concentration sometimes for young guys in general, not just him, um, is, is what's lacking. You know, just getting those guys to understand you can't make certain mistakes. So it's good when you get in these games and guys make mistakes because now you learn from the mistakes, you correct them, and then hopefully they don't happen again. Did you coach the end of the first half to let them struggle a little bit? I just stayed with guys that I, that, yeah, that I put in there. Obviously in a real game, I would, I'd have a little shorter leash um, in, in terms of subbing some guys um, when they didn't play well. I let a couple guys go too far. Um, they got tired. 
couple times, but then a couple guys that struggled, I just let them, you know, play through it. Yeah. So. When do you expect to get your keel back? Um, he's supposed to find something out Monday. So we'll kind of where he's at. So Monday or Tuesday. I think Monday or Tuesday we'll hopefully know something and hopefully we can get him back practicing. So. You no, know, Joe made a couple of really good passes. I thought. Um, yeah. How good of a passer is he? Yeah. How what do you see in practice? He, uh, he's a really good passer. You no, know, I, I thought he made a couple of good looks that our guys weren't ready for. You know, after playing with him for a while, you'd think they would be ready. So you know, it's. I love guys that can pass. I think anytime you have that element as a player, you know, and that gets contagious. Now it helps with your chemistry. You know, just guys being unselfish and moving the basketball. So, um, you know, I, I always tell him with big guys. You know, hit him in the head with it. I don't, I don't mean that to, you know, to get the ball to ricochet off their head, but instinctually with your instincts, we can go left or right with our hands, we can go low, we can go high, but nobody wants to get hit in the face with the ball. So your instincts, you know, you normally catch those. So you don't see a ball bounce off somebody's head too much in the game of basketball right. because that's your instincts to protect yourself. We've all done that. Um, so I always tell those guys when they miss those passes, you know, let, you know hit them right in the head with it. Because if you hit them in the head with it, they're, they're going to catch it more than they're not. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> so.